Hi, it's Sonia here, The Pretty Stitch. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, I'm so happy to have you here. So today we are going to be doing a Tunisian crochet stitch pattern. It's a very easy one, and it's one that I was looking at some old knitting uh, stitch dictionary magazines that I have. I love stitch dictionaries, and I had a really old one. And I saw this knit pattern, and I thought, hmm, I think I could translate that into Tunisian crochet. So it's a very basic knit pattern. It is called the moss or rice stitch. So here it is. Here is this old stitch dictionary that I have or magazine and it's this stitch right here. So here it is in knitting and uh, this is called Mon Tricot, which means my knitting, I believe in French. <laughs> And I got this at a thrift store years ago, and it is falling apart, as you can see, but I love looking at things like this for inspiration. So I might try to translate some other uh, knit stitches into Tunisian crochet as well, but I thought we'd start off with this one. So this is the Moss or Rice stitch here, and if you are a knitter, you've probably seen it before. This stitch pattern uses basic knitting stitches, and it will use basic Tunisian stitches as well. So to do this stitch pattern for Tunisian crochet, you're going to need to chain a multiple of two. So we will chain 12. And to do, demonstrate this, I am using my eye hook or 5.5 millimeter hook. I just have basic number four worsted weight yarn. And this stitch pattern would work with a variety of hook sizes and yarn types but I don't suggest fuzzy or furry yarn because you won't really be able to see the stitch pattern too much. All right, so row one is going to be our setup row. So we are gonna work in the back bump of the chain and the second bump from our hook. We are going to pull up a loop and we're just gonna to continue to pull loops up all the way across. And if you've never done Tunisian crochet before, I do have a complete playlist that goes over the basics and I can link that for you if you wanna check that out. If you have crocheted for a while, you should not have any problems picking up Tunisian crochet. And even if you're a knitter, um, you might be able to learn Tunisian crochet as well. I feel like it's kind of a fusion between crochet and knitting. Okay, so we have our loops on our hook. This is row one. This is our forward pass where we're putting the stitches on. So Tunisian crochet is always worked in two parts. Your first part, you're putting your stitches on your hook and your second part of your row, you're taking your stitches off. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two for the rest of the row. Okay, so we have completed row one. So row two, this is a two row repeat for this stitch pattern. Now in the knitted version, it's actually a little bit different, but uh, Tunisian crochet is not exactly like knitting, but it, it's similar. All right, so our first vertical bar right here, we are going to work a Tunisian knit stitch. So you insert your hook in that bar all the way through, pull up your loop, and our second vertical bar, we're gonna work the Tunisian pearl stitch. And we're gonna alternate this across. So it's gonna be knit, pearl, knit, pearl. And again, I do have a playlist that goes over these stitches. If you're not familiar with them, Okay, so now we have to finish up our row. So right here, it looks like a chain. We just insert our hook all the way through that chain. And we have finished off the first half of row two. So to work these stitches off, you yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two for the rest of the row.
Okay, so there we go. There is row two. And let's begin row three. So row three, our first stitch is going to be a purl stitch. Our second stitch is going to be a knit stitch. So we started off with row two with the knit. It was knit, purl, knit, purl, but row three, it's gonna be purl, knit, purl, knit. So in every knit stitch, you work a purl. Every purl stitch, you work a knit stitch all the way across. And since we chain 12, you should always, or I will always have 12 loops on my hook. If you chained 14, you would have 14 loops on your hook. If you chain 10, you would have 10 loops on your hook. And again, there's that chain at the end. We insert your hook in there and pull up a loop. And I have my 12 loops. And we work these loops off like we did for row one and two. Yarn over pull through one, yarn over pull through two for the rest of the row. So what we'll do for this particular stitch pattern is you're going to be repeating rows two and three for however long you want your swatch. And it doesn't matter what row you end on. You can end on a row two or end on a row three. It will not affect the look of the stitch pattern. So I'm going to go and work a few more rows so you can really see what it looks like. And I will meet you back. All right, so I have worked 10 rows and I really think this is quite a beautiful stitch and I ended on a row two, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna bind off. So I think you should, with this stitch pattern, you should bind off in pattern. So I ended on a row two, so I'm gonna bind off with a row three. So a row three would start off with a purl. So I'm gonna go in purl and just work that bind off. And yeah, I'm gonna keep my loop on my hook and so then my next stitch is going to be knit, so I'll bind off in knit. But I do really like this stitch pattern. It's very simple, very basic, just as it is in knitting. But I think it looks really, really nice. It definitely doesn't look exactly like the knitted version. But, you know, it's, it's similar. And the nice thing with this one is it lays flat because a lot of Tunisian stitches do not lay flat they tend to curl or this one because you have the purl stitches in there purl stitches do help your project to lay more flat same applies with knitting because when you have like all knit stitches it likes to curl as well so if you throw in some purl stitches it does help with the curling so that is one thing that they do have in common the two crafts and so then my last stitch just work and that end of that chain to do my bind off there. So there we go. I actually really like this stitch quite a bit. I think it's really pretty. I might be using this. I have a series coming up at Christmas time. I'm currently working on it. And maybe I'll use a stitch in that series. So just to refresh, I'll show you the knitted version again. So let me pull it up that way. So this is the rice stitch or they also call it moss or rice stitch so that's what it looks like in the knitted version and here is what it looks like in the tunisian crochet version so again not completely the same but it's still both of them are equally nice stitches so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching